Hello, everybody, and welcome to this new video series. In this video series, we are going to learn about SSH keys. We'll learn how to create them, use them to connect to cloud instances, such as in Google Cloud Platform or GCP, AWS, and DigitalOcean. And these will all be separate videos. So let's get right to it. Okay, I'm going to start with a quick explanation of what SSH is and, and how it works. So basically, if we want to connect to another computer system out in the cloud, we want to do it securely. So SSH is a secure shell protocol that allows us to encrypt ourselves and create a connection to do things on remote systems. So here in this diagram, you can see that I am on my local system, which is what you're probably watching this video on now. The local system is what's in your house. It's either going to be a Linux machine, a Mac, or a Windows machine. Even though you're working on this system, when you SSH into something, you're creating a tunnel, and it's as if you're going to be working on that machine in the cloud when we do this. So our local computer will connect to the cloud. And inside that cloud, we have cloud providers. And you can think of the cloud also as the internet in itself. But we have these cloud providers, such as AWS or GCP, which is Google Cloud Platform, or DigitalOcean. And what we want to do there is we want to connect to a huge server that's inside of these cloud providers that we connect to but we don't maintain, they're done completely by the cloud provider. And we create our node inside of that cloud provider, which will either be called a droplet, if it's DigitalOcean, it'll be called an instance or a VM, if it's AWS or in GCP. And other providers may call them different things, but essentially, they're really just virtual images in the cloud. So when we go ahead and we create that SSH tunnel between our local system and our instance in the cloud, which I will now refer to as our remote instance, that instance is what is going to connect into the testnet in the case of what a lot of you are watching this video now for, or any other internet provided service that you are utilizing this instance for. All right, let's quickly get down to it and uh, we'll go ahead and get ourselves set up to create an SSH session in our keys. And then we'll end this video and move on to another video to keep them as short as possible. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna open up a browser. And in the browser, I'm already at Google, but you can go ahead and type in google.com. And in the search bar, I'm gonna do a download and I'll do putty for Windows. And here it'll give me as my top element a link to download putty. Click to here. And then what we want to make sure is that when we download the latest version, um, if this video gets a little old, just make sure you're over this 0 0.76 because there are upgrades and additions to the SSH protocol that may not be available in lower versions. So for our Windows system, we'll go ahead and download the 64-bit.86 by just clicking on the link and allowing that to download. Go ahead and we open the file, a very commonly known process by most users, and you can go ahead and click your way through this and install it on your system. I'm not going to do that right now because I already have it on my system. So I'll click cancel here and finish out. Now, I also want to download PuttyGen. Now, what PuttyGen will do for me is it'll allow me to create 
these SSH keys that we're going to try and do in this session. So right here, halfway down the page or almost at the bottom of the page, I can see I have my 64-bit version of PuttyGen, and it's just an executable. So I'll click on that and allow that to download. And we'll go ahead and uh, minimize this. So the final concept that I would like to go over before we get down to actually creating our SSH keys and making a secure connection into the cloud to communicate between our local system and our remote system to get our work done is the idea of the key pairs. When we generate new SSH keys for this access, what we're doing is we're creating a public key and a private key. The public key we're going to place on our server, and that's going to act as our door lock, our deadbolt door lock that nobody's allowed into. And on our local system, we're going to have the private key, which is actually the key that we're going to use to create the connection, put the key in the door lock, turn the key, and get into our remote session, our node, our instance in the cloud, so that we can act as if we're actually on the box in the cloud, but we're doing it through a tunnel from our local system. So one other piece to this is we're going to add a passphrase. Now, not only do you have to have this private key that you're going to go and create the connection and put it in the door lock, but when you turn it, it's going to ask for one extra piece of authentication, and that's this passphrase. If you don't know it, you're not going to be allowed in. So now we have an extra layer of security. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and end the video. I hope it's been informative. I want to thank you for watching. And in the next video, we'll go ahead and create our SSH keys.